afternoon, Liz. Thank you very much for coming. Afternoon, thank you for having me. You applied for outdoor education tutor. Yes. Yes. Maths, preferably. Fantastic. So um, I've got my centre managers here with me. You'll be thank part you. of your session today. Pleasure you. You too. When you're ready, <laughs> we're all ready to yeah. hand it over to you. Cool. Okay, we've got two activities for you guys to try today. Uh, as you can see, I've come equipped with some resources. We're going to head outside, and it's a little bit uh, rainy, but you know, learn out the classroom, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you're, you know, used to that with being centre managers and all that kind of thing. So, if you'd to follow me, uh, we're going to head out. Hoods up, hoods down, I don't mind, how you. A little bit of a silly session for you guys, as it is aimed at young children, that's where my expertise really are, uh, mainly under 10s, but that's okay. First things first, do we all know our 2D shapes? Yeah? Gosh. Can you know? Yeah, 2D. Yeah, so, yeah. Flat ones. Can you give me a flat shape? Square. Brilliant. Any more? A pyramid? No, not quite. Triangle. Quite. Triangle. That's the one that is kind of a pyramid. Circle. So I just popped some sticks on the ground. I'm going to get you guys to make me a nice 2D shape, okay? This would be aimed probably at about six year olds, so you might be a little bit too old, but that's all right. So you just grab a couple sticks, guys, and you can make yourself a nice shape. Maybe a circle will be a bit more difficult, of course, but that's okay. So you just take a couple each. Maybe you have to work in a pair, I'm not too sure. Look at that. Oh, what's the, what's, so what's this shape? A diamond. Diamond? Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm liking the look of it. Yeah. And what have we got over here? Triangle. I think it's meant to be a You have a nanogram. Oh yeah, no, it's pretty, it's pretty good to me. Yeah, you might need a bit of a longer one there, but I can see that little one in there. Maybe an irregular quadrilateral kind of thing, but that might be a little bit too advanced for now. <laughs> So, if we go over here and we just take this square, what we're going to work together now is to pick up your sticks. Oh, Tom, that is a lovely shape over there, my friend. I'm absolutely loving that. A rectangle. Yeah, I like it. So, if we pick up all of the sticks for me, and we're going to try and make a... Uh, if we have a square on the floor, sorry, then we'll put that oh. there. That's okay. Uh, and we're going to try and make a cube, okay? So it's your challenge now, I can give you a little hand if we need, to make this square into a cube using the sticks we have here. Yeah, so we're all going to have to work together, a bit of teamwork. Yeah? Nice, it's looking good, it's coming along great. Look at that. Couple more, couple more sticks in there. There we go, we just get a close up on that. That is absolutely amazing guys, good job. Do you think you've done pretty well? Yeah. What would you rate that one out of 10? 10. 10? Yeah, absolutely, high five. You smashed it. Okay, and now, just for a second, why don't I take all the sticks back in? I've got another little activity you guys can do. Thank you. We'll pop on the floor down here. I would like you guys, as quick as we can, we're going to make all of these sticks from smallest to largest in size order, okay? As quick as we can. As quick as you can. Go. Go smallest. No, 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 legs. Legs. We're going off the legs. How long they are, okay? The smallest down here. That's probably the smallest one, I'd have to say. No, that's pretty big, I think. Yeah. On average, I'd say. On average. Well, this one's big chunky as well. That's a tiny. That's, that's, that's a little weak. Right, this one's long. Oh, this one. That one? No, that's shorter. That's a proper shrimp for that. <laughs> this one's short. I think that yeah, one's oh, long, about the same as that one. This is second Wait, longest. Wait, just the longest. That's the no, longest. No, that's the second longest. This one's pretty long. That's a one inch wonder. This one's quite level. One inch wonder. That's a proper ten inch of that. Well, Jerky as well, I think. Oh, no. What can I say? Oh, man. Oh, there we go. I think we absolutely <laughs> smashed that. Yeah. How did you guys find that? Was that okay? That was great. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Fantastic. Um, cool. Thank you very much. Find that really tricky done. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. So we'll start yeah. our formal part if you want to make our way back oh, inside. Yeah. Be cool. Right. Now we're going to leave that one there. typing away, I'm just going to make a few notes. No, that's true, that's really cool. So, thank you very much for preparing that micro each. So, if you were, if you had the opportunity to continue that, they would be back next week. So how would you progress that session? So, I think we definitely would go, so Luke was saying, oh, is that length or is that girth of, the, of them? And also maybe with the shapes as well, looking into angles, interior and exterior angles, or obtuse and acute kind of things like that, which is a bit more challenging, but obviously the first week is always getting to grips with where people are uh, as a level and then moving on from there. Fantastic. So, why should I hire you then? Well, I 
think we're quite passionate about the role. Um, I'm definitely we've got quite a bit of experience working with young people as well, and also I just absolutely have a great passion and love maths, uh, especially. You know, the course I'm doing at the moment isn't very maths orientated, but I do still like to do that in my spare time as well. So that's something we're definitely passionate with, as well as obviously working outside. Weather doesn't bother me. I'm just getting out there as much as I can. Fantastic. So, how do you describe your personality? I think I'm very bubbly, very loud, um, definitely quite engaging. I think I'm the opposite of what most teachers are in that I'm the teacher, you're the student, I definitely want to work with them. I'll get stuck in with the activity as well, you know, if I can to help them out, but also let them obviously do it and kind of grow for themselves. Fantastic. Um, so, we can be quite high pressure environment, we can get quite busy during our peak period. How do you work under pressure and can you give an example of that? I think I work quite well under pressure. At the moment, my uh, role, I work at a um, like kids' climbing centre, and um, so it's kind of outdoor orientated, but not as much as what I'd want to go into. But definitely working under pressure, we have 17 customers coming in every half an hour, and I'm, my job is actually to make sure that everything's going well in that climbing area, in that arena, just to make sure that no one's being safe, ensuring safety, making sure that everything is running smoothly as well, dealing with customer service, all that kind of thing. So I think under pressure, I'll quite good. So it sounds like you're already working quite high pressure place. Yeah. Um, so to talk about what you're good at, can you maybe talk about some of your weaknesses? Uh, I'd probably say my time management isn't the best. I do keep a schedule weekly and sometimes have a calendar monthly as well, but just try not to double book myself. And also if I have an hour to fill, I need to make sure I fill it, don't go on over that hour or under time or something like that, especially within a session. I don't want people being bored, but I also don't want to run out of time with things. So what's your motivation to perform well in this class? Uh, well, I love working with younger people and just seeing those little or big wins as well for me is very important. Just making sure that everyone's growing as a person, striving for excellence, all that kind of thing. Um, especially with younger children, they might find things challenging, but if by the end of that session you've got one little win out of them, then I think that's worth it for me. That motivates me definitely. Fantastic. I like that. Um, so how do your own values align with the company's? Uh, I'm really big on being outdoors and with, come, with that comes sustainability for me and I know I saw that on your values as well. So just reusing those sticks that I found outdoors earlier on today um, that could be incorporated into my lesson plan, that's really important to me, just to make sure there's no point making resources out of paper and laminating them to go outdoors if we already have that stuff out there. Fantastic. Um, why do you want to work for this company in particular? Uh, so I've seen that you've got a whole range of centres and also you've got one opening up in Spain and I think that's great. It's definitely a holiday destination and I think people are going over there just because you're going on holiday doesn't mean you can stop learning. So I think that you've got all the activities of your climbing and your kayaking and all that kind of thing. But I think implementing a bit of lesson into that in a fun way though is always a good thing for kids. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a great environment to learn outdoors in. Um, how would you describe your current knowledge and experience then for this job? Uh, I've worked previously now for about three and a half years with kids from the ages of six to 14 uh, in scouting mainly as a volunteer. So I have that experience behind me to work with kids, keep me engaged, all that kind of thing. With maths, I don't have the greatest experience in my past, but that's something I really want to strive for, you know, being able to teach people as well as the outdoors, which I have experience with in my college course and in my current job as well. Fantastic. Um, how would this post fit in with your future aspirations? So as I said, I've got that experience, but also my big thing is I've always wanted to teach, but just not in that formal classroom environment. If that's, you know, being a climb instructor, a science instructor, that's great, but I also have that passion for math. So being able to really incorporate that into what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis would just be ideal for me. Okay, then what's your, your long-term goal? What do you see yourself doing in 10 years' time? So I plan to do some travelling. But obviously, if you've got your place open up in Spain, that's a good travel opportunity for me. If it's only five days a week, I've got the weekend to go off and do other activities for myself. But also, just getting that, you know, setting me down a little bit to be able to get out of house and all that kind of thing, which is really expensive nowadays. And obviously, just being able to uh, make sure that I'm still following what I actually want to do. I don't want to be sat in a nine to five job that I'm not enjoying because I want to have that like, better quality of life for myself. Okay, fantastic. Do you have any more colleagues with any questions? Uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. have you ever sort of worked in the outdoor industry before? Uh, so I've worked a little bit, I work in a 
climate centre, it is indoors, it's still got that same regime with climbing, teaching. I do instruct on a Tuesday afternoon as well and teach children how to climb. And also I work, I volunteer uh, in like scouting with younger children at the moment, under six to eight with the Witcher Beavers. And we go out all the time. This week we're actually going on a hike and last week we were setting up tents. So I've got that kind of outdoor experience with younger children, yeah. How long have you been working with younger children like in your past job? Uh, so my current job, uh, I've only been working at just the past year. But I've been in scouting myself for uh, 12 years now, and then I've also been a young leader as uh, a volunteer for three and a half years now, coming up to four in October. Okay, so you're quite experienced with your work with young children. Yeah. Right. Um, so, I, re I really want to go back and show yeah, outside. Yeah. <clears throat> so obviously you're going to be working outdoors quite a lot, that's going to be the main focus. Yeah. So what sort, of, what sort of age range would you say? Quite young. Yeah, yeah probably, so probably between, well, I, my <laughs> favourite age range is probably between six and eight to work with. But mm. probably going low as four and up to ten. I think after that, I'm teaching um, like secondary school level. I don't think I'm personally equipped for that. But I've definitely got that primary school aspect, especially with the fun activities that I put children through. All right, so quite a young age range. So yeah. let's say, you're obviously working outside, British weather, unreliable. Yeah. So let's say, you know, you've got a session lined up. Mm -hmm. It's tipping down outside. Rain, wind, cold. Yeah. And a kid comes up, I haven't got a coat. Mum didn't pack my coat. What mm -hmm. am I going to do? Um, how, would you, how would you sort of handle that? Because surely you can't take them out of that sort of weather. Yeah. So I think personally, I would always carry spare. I'd always have yeah, spare. If I was stationed at Sparshot Activity, then we would always have a box of spare coats, spare walk gloves, all that kind of thing. If it really came to it and the weather was absolutely horrendous, we could hopefully find a place inside to go, you know, to still carry on our activities. If only like with our uh, activity day, we'd be sick, we could bring those sticks inside. That's absolutely fine by me. I'm not completely opposed to being indoors because obviously health and safety first well-being of my students but we'll always try to get outside if we can. Spare coats at spa shop for people that don't lock up with them. Yeah. Cool, I, I like that. Sure. Thank you. This is sick. So do you have any questions for us? Oh, I was just wondering what the working hours would kind of be like for me because obviously I'd say quality of life is a big deal to me so my weekend is So during the week, uh, during the week uh, we could probably guarantee sort of like the two days off, it may not be Saturday and Sunday, just yeah, because that tends to be when you want to come into the centre. During our peak hours, things may get a little bit busier. We may need you to come in uh, for longer hours, but we will try and provide those two days off still. They just may not be in a row. Maybe one day here, one day there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Anything else? Did you require any qualifications that I needed to bring maths wise kind of thing? I've obviously got my um, A in GCSE, but if you've got your GCSEs, fantastic. Um, for primary school, we'll be fine with that and we'll provide yeah. all in-house training. Um, if you would like to progress in certain qualifications, we can look at doing that after sort of a year's work, just to see what that is and before we go for them. Thanks very much. Thank you. Excellent.